Hi, uh, we are learning simulation and uh, in this session I would like to help you to do this simulation in Excel and the example that we covered in the lecture is Harris Auto Tire and we learned the five steps. Step one was establishing probability distribution. Step two was building a cumulative probability. Step three is uh, um, assigning a random number and uh, uh, number four is uh, creating random numbers. And step five is simulating the experiment. So let's uh, follow these steps and to do uh, the analysis together. So the first thing is Harris Auto Tire step one, establish a probability distribution. And what I did was just, you know, uh, copied this data into Excel. So daily demand for tires zero to five. Uh, we have, and uh, the frequency days was 10 to 20, 40, 60, 40, 30, and there was 200 days of observations, and the probability occurrence was 5%, 10%, and so forth, and in total it was 100%. So I just typed that information here. And the second step that uh, we need to do is uh, we want to look at the um, uh, cumulative probability so there is a typo here, uh, cumulative probability distribution. So we have the um, table that we have uh, copied the data with, and the cumulative probability uh, is you know, adding all the probability from the previous classes or levels or categories. And uh, for uh, daily demand zero, we don't have a previous uh, or you know, offer, offer or previous uh, uh, classes. So we are going to just uh, have only 5% as a cumulative probability. But for the second category, we have 10% uh, and also the previous uh, occurrence was 5%. So what you do is um, click on that M14 plus the next probability M15 and that is going to create a 15%, 5% plus 10% uh, uh, at 15% of probability. It's the same way now for 20% plus 15%, that's going to give you 35%. If you have a lot of rows, you can just um, copy this cell down the road like this, and then you are going to have uh, 65, 85, and uh, 100%. Notice that this is 100%. I want to note to that uh, if you have everything added up, then it has to come to 100%. That's a step two, building a cumulative probability distribution. And step three is send, setting random number intervals. So what I did was I copied this um, table over here, right? So I copied and paste over here. So I exactly copied and I create random number intervals. Random number interval is that we want to just uh, make this one as an integer or real number. So what you do is Cumulative probability times 100 gives you random number intervals for this uh, simulation. And uh, copy it down. Then you have 5, 15 to 100 of uh, the values you have there. So 5 to 100 random number intervals created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this cell and then move up to the first uh, column of this table and right click. And I'm going to say, uh, paste special values only because I included it, uh, a formula there. I'm going to just, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this to here and then I'm going to start from zero, right? So that's uh, what I want to do because the first class from start from zero and to five and 15, 35, 65, and 85. So I'm going to um, change that. I, I want you to remember that uh, I inserted a zero as the starting point and then 5 to 85 I have uh, this right here. And for fourth step now we are going to create uh, random numbers and um, we are assuming that we are cre create uh, 100 days of random numbers so I typed that and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, the random number and it's fairly straightforward. You use a rand function and uh, you are going to enter nothing, rand, and uh, nothing in between and parentheses. And then I want to make it, uh, uh, if you just rand, 
then it's going to give you uh, a number less than one. But I want to make it a real number. So multiply by 100 gives you 67459. So you have real number that might correspond with this random interval, random number intervals. And then after that, you have to copy this one down. So what I do is I just simply double click on this uh, square. Then it copies the formula down to the 100 at the end of the table. So now it's a time to look up the simulated daily demand. What I want to do is I want to look up this random number from uh, this table. So random number intervals and daily demand for tires. I want to look at only these two columns and I want to find when random number is 99, I need to have five as a daily demand. Or, or when random number is 58, it falls between 35 and 65. Therefore, 3 uh, is my daily demand for tires. So that I want to look at. And uh, at the time, the function that you can use is VLOOKUP function. So VLOOKUP function, very powerful function that you will use uh, often in Excel. So VLOOKUP function, look up this value 99 from the table called uh, you know, random number intervals and daily demand for tires. And I'm going to choose only this two, this portion of the table. And I want to, if you find, say, 99 between, it's 85, you're above 85, so you have to bring, or Excel has to retrieve a number that corresponded to this 85 class, and that's uh, daily demand, and that's, num that's from column number two. And um, it asks, whether it is approximate match or exact match, I want uh, approximate uh, match because you know um, it, the the class is not exact, right? We want to find uh, any number in between the upper bound. For example, zero to five, we have three or three point five or four point seven, and that all brings up the daily demand on the zero. Similarly, sixty five point eight or eighty four, that has to bring uh, four. So at that time we are going to be using approximate match. Uh, sometimes you have you want to have an exact match when everything is spelled out in your category. In this case, it's not the case. So we are going to use this true option, which is uh, approximate match. So I'm going to do that, and it brought a one uh, because it's a 7.9 and it's between 5 and 15, so it brought 1, so that's a good sign. And what I want to do is I want to first uh, fix this table because when I, you know, um, uh, when I copy it down, the location will change uh, if it is relative. So I want to make it absolute reference, the location of the table is fixed. So I would do that, and then now 32.4 falls into 15, between 15 and 35, so it, it brought up the right number. And I'm going to just copy that, and everything is copied. And ju you just you know make sure that everything's right. For example, uh, say 26 falls into 2, 15, 15, and 35, so 2, that's good. 97 should be 5, 52 to 3, it's between 35 and uh, 65, so it has to be three. So we, I see that uh, it, it, cr it correctly retrieved the number, so that's a good thing. Now, I have uh, simulated a daily demand that can come up you know, depending on our um, uh, probability situation. And if you have done that, you are now have to analyze what you have done. So let me first exper uh, uh, introduce you to frequency table. Frequency table is, um, you know, I want to know how many uh, uh, things are belonging to a certain category. So I'm going to create, you know, lower bound zero to upper bound five, and the six to fifteen. So essentially, this is from uh, from this random intervals, 5 to 100, 5 to 100 is here, low bound is 0 to 86. So I have that. And uh, frequency, uh, here is a very important part, how to do, how to, you know, find how many um, uh, daily demands are falling into these uh, categories. So what we can do is, first, you want to highlight the entire array uh, from 
R34 to R39 and hit equal sign and I'm going to use a frequency function frequency function and I'm going to say data array which data are you looking at I'm looking at uh, 49.25 to the end of the uh, table so you have quite large table in that case what you can do is you can uh, do command shift if it is uh, Excel if it is uh, uh, Microsoft then control shift and downward arrow then it will select the entire table the column uh, for you so I, and I'm gonna um, um, enter um, comma sign right so I've entered the comma sign and then it asks uh, the beans array so beans array you have to specify the upper bound 5 to 100 like that and then here's a very important step uh, you want to uh, press control and shift together control and shift together and then hit enter right then it, boom it automatically counted um, uh, the, the the number that falling that fall into between lower bound and upper bound the 0 to 5 there are four of them and 6 to 15 six of them and so forth you have all of them uh, to make sure that everything was counted and maybe you can uh, calculate the sum of these um, frequencies and you have 100 so which, which is very good so 100 of the data was all counted in and uh, this is an accurate frequency relative frequency is you know what percentage of this class is accounting for the total frequencies so 7 divided by 100 is the thing that you want to do just you want to make 100 that cell on absolute reference and then scroll down then uh, you have that and see if you have everything counted and that's one so 100 uh, the percent is 100 percent that's very good and uh, the daily demand that correspond to this um, categories are one to five and therefore the total inventory you are going to carry uh, for these cases equals frequency times the daily demand and copy that down and then um, so that's your uh, inventory state that uh, in case um, daily demand is one then you have 10 percent of the chances then 10 10 of them are required and so forth and what about average demand then what is your average demand so uh, it has to be um, average demand has to be um, the total inventory divided by uh, the number of so so the total inventory these are the total inventory that you need right so let's use the sum function sum of the total inventory and this remember that uh, this is for 100 days right so so uh, for 100 days you need uh, that many inventories so 3.19 is your average uh, demand or inventory that you will have to have so and the standard deviation is standard deviation um, would be um, the entire similar demand right that Right, so so for the uh, demand that we have simulated, uh, I want to know the, the standard deviation of that. That gives 1.28. So, um, you know, uh, you have average demand is three. Sometimes um, you have 67% a, a of chance to go beyond the three. So I think given the standard deviation, uh, three plus 1.2 is about uh, four point something so to be safe carrying five tires for this specific type of uh, tire would be a safe for safe bet for you and uh, um, so the cumulative inventory is the total inventory that you will have to carry that is 0 to 70 and you have that there 
and average inventory is again uh, we have already already calculated 3.31 so um, um, so average inventory will be average of so sum of these inventories divided by 100 will give you the average demand average inventory you will have to carry so again 3.02 and 1.32 so average demand is three tires and standard deviation 1.3 so if you want to be really on the safe side uh, you know three uh, two to three uh, standard deviation uh, is very safe if you want to have two standard deviation two sigma level right and three sigma level right so you have two sigma level then it's going to be 1.23 times 2 if it is a three sigma level then times 3 right so so you want to have a safety stock sigma and safety stock So you see, uh, if you want to be on a safe side, you have to carry 4.3, right, plus 2.93. So that's a, a total inventory per day, daily inventory. So you will have to be uh, 2.9 plus this is going to be your um, total daily inventory that you have to carry so if you want to be on a safe side then seven of them you have to carry always but if it is too costly and you want to be just reasonably safe then 5.53 might be uh, your bet for you so that's your conclusion that you can get from uh, this simulation and uh, uh, you know you can simulate various circumstances for example you can change um, the cumulative probability, um, you know, if, you know, the ch probability changes, then you can also change these things out and, and you will have a different scenarios to go by.